All right, so I found this roll of receipt tape, and I, for some reason, I had the idea and the urge to put a story on it for you. I don't really have a story uh, in mind, though, so I'll just make one up as I go. Okay, let's see. Um, once upon a time, a hundred million years or days ago or so, a loungy and loiterous boy leaned against a fence post overlooking the valley where many marvelous moldy muppets had gathered once again for an annual convention on the meaning of buttons and thread and the stuttering dread soaking into the bread and up through the cracks in the warm woolen sacks that the boy on the hill spent his long days and nights and fingers knitting with huge oaken oars carved with care from the bam bam tree and oiled with grease and painted with purpley greenish peas squished underfoot the way Gramps used to do it back when people still took pride in the way they grew through the grates on the west side of the house in curly pearly plumages in a roundabout way toward the sky where the lack of peas was made up for in breeze and birds with their perilous turds in the sparkling air with me floating there with naught but a care for the swirling inferno of bluebirds all attached at the wingtips interlocked in a fearsome formation and crisscrossing my eyes in a way no one could possibly say was natural or by chance or even pretty to look at so i shaved the goose flesh on my back and gritted my eyes and stepped down out of the maelstrom back into the world of overreading expressions on eyebrows and shaving mine off so no one knows what I'm thinking, even as I check the mail with the wrong key first and the wood chipper takes it all away onto the conveyor belt and it's melted down into a carefully sorted sludge at the mail sludge factory where the industrious workers are sworn to never smile or flinch or leave or ask for a raise because after all they get to take home a few tablespoons of the good stuff every day if they want it to smear about on the walls of their dingy dungeons and swallow at dejectedly over a cup of a smaller cup on a large plate of unrelated sludge which isn't really that good for you, but it's not all that bad either, so go ahead and eat up, buddy. It'll fill your belly and give you something to fall asleep on and wake up tomorrow with fresh goals and cardboardy burps through the dull, throbbing, immaculate spin of the lesser orb, and believe it or not, after all this trouble, Jimmy down the street still doesn't know how to triangulate the distance between carefree and unconscious and he still parks in the fire lane and he still swaddles his babies in roofing tar which actually works surprisingly well and looks pretty enough to get his baby stolen from the fridge at work a lot and he doesn't even complain which is very commendable in an utterly frigid sort of way we'd all like to see a little more of in ourselves but don't have the emotional mobility to switch gears so quick because when we found one thing we like why should we order something else and risk being served something we don't like even a little bit less so I'll stick to ordering sog dogs everywhere I go, and if someone has a problem with me boiling the bun with the wiener for the soggiest approach possible, they can go stand in the rain for a few years until they really prune up and fall apart into little bite-sized chunks that rumbly tumble into the storm drain and head toward the ocean but get clogged up in a pipe somewhere and back up the whole system with entire towns submerged and washed off the map and everyone that can't swim will take huge gulps of fleshy water and soggy buns will fill their lungs and they'll never be hungry again thanks to your naive sog dog dogging and the worst part is you won't even be around to regret it while the world sloshes around flailing for the life buoy with short quick breaths and dead eyes and little dense flocks of birds flitting about overhead between unseen resting spots somewhere deep in the roasted horizon where the edges of the map are grizzled and cracked into double quarter stacked petty wapped sick and hack looking quacks scribing prozac for plaque but no word of six pack cutback or slacking back to the soundtrack of the great haystack needle search ransacking the countryside because people aren't careful enough to use a blade of dry grass as a needle when they think they need metal to get started so procrastination sets in just a little bit like a mild case of the plague and we smirk and wink at it because it's probably not that bad it's probably nothing to worry about it's probably benign and if i get caught up in some other stuff i'll have a good excuse not to think about it for a little longer or at least 
long enough to get drop dead exhausted and just fall asleep without thinking about anything ever again in this sleepy little world of sheets and humming fans whirring air across the rug into my poor little face reclined on the pummeled pigeon down pillow lined with only the best rat fur monopoly money could buy in those damp fog soaked days when it was wise to breathe out more than in if you had any lung control left or access to a nice pair of bellows hmm <laughs>